the intro music. Yeah. Woohoo. Hey, everybody. Today, we're going to sit down, talk about the silent enemy, the refinery, and the fact that this now opens up eight, technically 12, if you count all the different levels, free primes in the game, and everything that have to do with the new temporal artifact and silent enemy loop and system and crewing and all the different things. We're trying to cover that and the basics of that all in this one individual video so to start with let's actually talk about starting the process starting the process means go to your export faction now at the time of making this video these are here your silent nebula tokens and your temporal disruptors now i have requested these be moved into the daily claims chest makes no sense that they're here put them in the daily claims chest where everything else is at so that i can one click button and collect all of them but after you've done that and let's assume you've gone through your loop you're going to go and Go through your artifact store. So there's a new refinery in the artifact store. And this is where you're going to find all the goodies. So you have number one, the temporal restoration, which is allowing you to unlock the new, brand new artifacts where I am probably going to be focusing mostly on where is it at? Where is the eye of Ara right here? So focusing on this one because of the efficiency for artifacts, which I really, really like. So trying to unlock that one quickly. But Let's talk about the refinery and the numbers as a whole on the screen here. Thanks to Jules. Jules got this to me and done like literally hyper fast. So greatly, greatly appreciated. But let's talk about what these numbers mean and what these numbers do and, and what they do for you. So you'll notice that the hostiles are set by temporal disruptor parts. And depending on your level, you're expected to either do uncommon or rare four star, five star, six star. So please bear in mind that the hostile you hit is literally designed by your ops level. So you don't just go waste a token on a hostile that has no purpose. So if you are a level, say, 51 player, don't go farm a 46. It has zero value to you. You're going to need to farm the ones in your ops level. And this can be difficult for some because, well, Scopa doesn't expect you to do things like skip ships. But we'll talk about crewing in a bit because I have noticed that people are stronger than they believe they are, but they have to be shown how to do it. But this is a big one. So right up there, you're going to notice that. Now, I mentioned previously, uh, just a you know, couple minutes ago, free-to-play sourcing for Prime. So you do have that in this with a chance to pull a new particle. So if you remember, we've got three sources of Dolomite particles in the game today, which is a free-to-play sourcing of a new Prime currency that came out recently. Well, as of today, you actually have a sourcing for this one right here, the Prime Medallion. So the Prime Orbit Medallion, as you can see at the top right of your screen, has a chance to drop from doing this box. Now, this box has got the same cost no matter what ops level you are, but it will vary based on the part you need. Now, if you look at the very top right of your screen, it tells you where to find your part. So if you are ops 49 like me, I need to go to the 46 through 49 systems and grind those out. So it tells me where to go, which I do appreciate. But let's do a triple pull since I've earned a triple pull today from my one tokens and I did not get any the prime medallions but i did to get ship parts for all four types as well as 450 temporal disruptors that i can then can go back and use on that eye of a raw that i talked about that's my personal one that i'm going after first but i do think there are some good ones so i'm just gonna do a six chest pull because i can i got six of it and there we go now the good news is no cooldown so however many i get it's however many i have at the moment but back out again i want to talk about and remind you on this chart Please remember that this is a slow drip. I do hope to get more in the future because remember there are three Dolomite drips now. You have Field Training, x -Borg, and Section 31 all dripping Dolomite particles. So those primes are becoming easier and easier to get free to play. And hopefully these will also continue in that trend. This is a good thing. We don't always have good things to say, but this is a very good thing by Scopely. So I want to give him credit for that. Now, this is a negative or a positive depending on where you are as a player. How these have value in terms of whether you can do them or not is going to be really based on what ship and crew that you're using, different tactics you can find to have success. So the big key is, like I said, you need to do it based on your level. So if you are a level 49, then you are going to very specifically need to hit the 46 through 50s. As you can see, I'm going to make it real big so you can see it. Now, if you are level 39 for the event, you can go kill the 41s. Believe it or not, it is doable. And... Even using the crews that Scopely recommended can make it doable. Here is an Enterprise, and not even a very strong Enterprise, 8.4, no offense, uh, our friend over here, but there are players at 39 with 10 mil plus Enterprises these days. 
So eight is not the strongest enterprise, but you can see using that Severus Decius Charbonnet crew. The whole purpose of this is the silent hostiles give your ship burning. So you take advantage of that with Severus and that will limit the fight to five rounds, basically allowing you to punch up a little bit in this particular instance. But let's talk crewing for these different hostiles. I'll start with what I'm currently using. I am currently using Enterprise E-Data uh, on the side, Enterprise E-Picard as captain, and then Trip Tucker as my third officer. But what really matters here, and I want to really, really, really emphasize this, is not as much the officers on the bridge, which of course matter, but what's below decks. So let's scan one of these hostiles and talk about why. So natively, they've only got a 10% crit chance and 150% damage, which isn't that much. However, if you scan them, you'll notice a couple of abilities. Right here, Ruthless Pursuit increases critical chance to 100% for four rounds. So it is going to hit a critical a critical damage by 350, uh, 350% at the start of each round. So that's where Trip Tucker can be valuable at higher tiers. Now, this does stack from what we've seen early on. Now, if this information changes, then we can always come back and change this video. But this seems to stack round per round. So 350, 350, 350, it just grows. But regardless, Trip Tucker could be very valuable there because he does the opposite he reduces it now i have a tier two trip tier one is only 50 percent remember it's all about weapon patterns this particular hostile that somebody else just hit fires four weapons per round each weapon will activate trip tucker so a tier one trip can reduce that critical uh, percentage that critical damage percentage by 200 percent but like i said it's the below decks that really matter here for you players so we're going to see you know talios is getting used because they might have more below deck spots versus other ships but all breach is huge if you have criticals you want to get damage modifiers you want to beat these as quickly as possible because the longer the fight goes the more powerful they become so i have odo but more importantly these are the main ones i want to have you who might be the most important uh, pve officer in the game today and then I have Bolano Torres, but there are multiple ways that we can load these crews out. You can see I'm grinding through them now. And if you have some of those crews, you can have success. Now, to be clear, I'm not only using brand new crews that just came. You could use a variety. Scopely actually gave a variety in their recommendations. One of those being the one you saw on the Enterprise. This allowing you to make sure that a fight does not go more than five rounds and it actually is viable for most players at most levels you will notice a difficulty scaling as you get into the 50s where we're going to want to try some other tactics but early on this is actually very good very viable now talk about higher level tactics well here's one of them this is running janeway the emh so uh that's the doctor from voyager and then gorkon now why is gorkon there gorkon is there for hull breach exactly what i was talking about with hugh you want to create criticals, then you want hull breach, and Janeway's also giving you a boost to isolating damage. So these are technically older officers, because the Voyager has been a you know a couple arcs back now, and then Gorkon is a classic officer. Now, also keep in mind that what makes these officers strong, you can also build around them. You talk about the ability to use mitigation or have officers that have a mitigating effect. Well, that means that we can also use the Strange New World crew here and still mix it in. The big key is below decks. Now, I do want to add a caveat. This uh, player was using Cerritos boosting. So this was not just a pure naked Talios going in. It had buffs around it. I don't want it to be misleading. I'll make sure you all have all the details. But the below decks was what I was talking about. Tendi below decks for more whole health. You below decks and then Belon Torres. But in this case, this player decided to use uh, Gorkon for their whole breach. Just getting whole breach is kind of the key. And then you can find your way grinding through. And you can see this is a single token. I'm getting around 20, 20 to 5,000, focusing on the 46s. Please note that they do scale up very quickly. So if you try to go after 49s only, you're not going to get as much loot and you are going to go boom. And I'm purposely using a loot crew. But we will swap this around and I'll show you some other crews when it blows up to give you an idea of what you can do. The biggest key is go for the lowest hostile in your run is what I would recommend. Those runs, of course, being what you see in the refinery here. So the lowest rung being if you are a 40 to 45, focus on focusing on those 41s so that you aren't trying to punch up to a much more difficult hostile, which is what the 44s are. The 44s are harder to complete. You only get two tokens a day. So you don't want to waste those tokens. Now, again, let's go back into some of these crew recommendations. For real, not everybody has the Enterprise E officers. That said, 
everybody's going to end up with enterprise e-data thanks to the holodeck sourcing well, let's hop in here and talk about a variety of options and different crews number one voyager is a big one i'm going to list voyager because it is the most powerful version of uh, what we talk about strange new worlds being able to do so i'm going to go grab the doctor real quick from ship b and then i'm going to throw enterprise e data back up there the reason that i don't full synergy this is full synergy can actually weaken the ability of hue this is a big one and if you don't have hue and you're level 40 plus go do borg solo armadas that's how you source hue in the game and he's simply a must have there's no debate around it you need hue he's amazing and you need to work on any event that pays him out any flash pass events that pay him out any free treasury you can grab and your borg solo armadas to unlock you criticals are simply so valuable to damage creation in these hostile runs but let's talk about top slot officers so we've see we've got our uh, when you take damage increases your mitigation we talk about the value of mitigation you can have mitigation from strange new world officers and then we talk about janeway's captain's ability here which you can also get the same similar effect from strange new worlds though a little bit weaker but you will not have janeway's isolytic that you get from the very bottom which is nice but if you have unlocked enterprise e data you can still have it there there are a variety of crew types that you can even run for example let's say that you unlocked trip tucker but that's all you have you don't have any of the others well then we can do a classic run get out of here janeway we want a classic run what do i mean by classic run i mean pike moreau enterprise e archer here i'm sorry uh archer just or just trip tucker wow words are hard and names are hard i'm trying to get ready for our live stream so we're gonna put pike up here throw by group moreau and what is this doing this is putting a 2.2 multiplier onto his already pretty decent ability so for me i've been multiplying this by 2.2 i'd be getting a little under 200 percent per weapons hit which would greatly reduce the power that these new hostiles have when i'm fighting them and again this is something that a lot of players will have if you don't have trip tucker yet then you can get him through the event store this is another potentially powerful crew for you to take advantage of and you can use and these all are being discussed very 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 passionately in my discord and again i try to remind all players of this you are better than you think you are we have players at 55 beating the 55s but it is difficult because you got to understand the premise of why and how these hostiles work understand that they are basically just big critical machines and the longer the fight goes the more powerful they become so you want to kill them quickly and you want to focus on the smaller ones in this case basically punching down which has kind of been a recent theme, but doing so will allow you to have a great value in this where the refinery is going to pay you out a lot of, in my opinion, really neat stuff. I really like this refinery. No, I'm not happy about more loops. I don't know many players that are, but if you can see the hostile loot drop on the side over there, if you're comparing a 41 through 46, you're not really getting much of a difference in terms of the parts, especially since you can probably kill a lot more of the lower level hostile. And then you simply want to focus on turning those in so that you can complete that refinery you also once you get to a nice spot you see i got a tier nine pylum if you're not skipping ships you might be able to more easily complete this than others but i do want to remind you that a lot of players are able to do it again just coming down to the basis of crews this prevents a fight lasting more than five rounds but you're still going to want to have a below deck stacking that allows you to create more damage so that you can actually punch up on these hostiles and even beyond that if you want to be like one of the big boys something like this using your talios if maybe you haven't gotten your sompec or your sanctus out but maybe throwing on a boost will help put you over the edge if you need any personal help reach out to me directly and you can do that on discord and facebook live long and prosper stay safe with their space cowboys deuces that's me catch you on the next video and again if you need any help reach out to me appreciate all of you love you an even better outro than the intro for the empire and glory to your house.